In this video, I want to talk about setting up your Amazon FileMaker Cloud server, but with the BYOL option or bring your own license. Now basically, this is the video when you want to purchase anything else besides the 5-pack, 10-pack, 25-pack, 100-pack. So in a previous video, we walked through the entire process where you're going to pick a 5, 10, 25, or 100-pack, which is an annual FileMaker license, and it's FileMaker license for Teams, right? So that's kind of what you were shooting for in the previous video. And of course, if you bought it off that previous set of SKUs, you could actually buy it on an hourly basis, which was kind of crazy. So in this video, we're going to go through almost the same purchase process, except kind of in the middle, it forks out in a way and is different because we're going to the FileMaker website and interact with them. So up front, the reason you're going to go BYOL process is for a number of reasons. One is you want to buy a subscription to FileMaker that is not 5, 25, or 100. You want to buy 15 or 30 or 35 or 45 or 75 or something like that. That's one thing. Second thing is, is that you want to use an AVLA license, which is an older annual license, or you want to use an annual site license. So you would go through this process for that. Also, if you're an educational institution or a nonprofit, Going through BYOL allows you to get education and nonprofit pricing. If you go just direct to Amazon and you buy those four SKUs that they had available, those are business and government pricing. So if you wanted the discount or educational pricing, you're going to go through this BYOL process. And you're also going to go through this process if you have an existing FileMaker license, a server license. So you already have an AFLT license or an AVLA license or an ASLA license and you want to convert from using an on-premise server to a FileMaker cloud server. So you can convert. So if you go through the decision-making process and you decide that FileMaker cloud is a better situation for you because maybe you're using on-premise server on an old server and it's too slow and too old so you want to get a new server but instead of buying the new hardware, you're just going to rent a virtual server from Amazon. That's a really good reason to jump to FileMaker Cloud. Once again, if you're still evaluating whether you should jump to FileMaker Cloud, we have a separate video that talks about that decision-making process. So I recommend that you go there to check that out. So we're going to dive into the process here. The first thing I'm going to do is point out that we have our kind of our little progress chart across the bottom that you're going to see as we go along and so as we uh, complete different parts of the process you'll see that uh, highlighted there the first thing that we're going to do is point out that if you haven't set up an Amazon AWS Web Services account you're going to need to do that and you're basically going to go through here and you're going to uh, create a name create a password and then once you progress forward, you're going to fill out the rest of your information for your organization and get your account set up. So that's really step one. If you already have an AWS account set up, then you can skip this and just use that. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is log on to your AWS account. I'm going to log on to Amazon.com forward slash console will end up being and then I can press the button in the top right corner it says sign into console so I can press that button and I get the AWS control panel which has a ton of really cool features and things in it we're only going to use a small fraction of what Amazon has available in it so the next step in our process is to select the region in the upper right hand corner for where we're going to want to create our server just go ahead and specify this and so you need to make sure that the region you select is an available region where FileMaker has made available its FileMaker cloud service um, initially it's going to be North America in the Oregon West Coast Data Center or the uh, Virginia Data Center in the East Coast and as the months go along you'll see additional data centers supported now at this point understand that this pop-up list doesn't know that you're interested in FileMaker. It doesn't care. It's showing you all the Amazon data centers. It's up to you to restrict to the correct one. The next thing we're going to do is press the EC2 button, which is our 
Elastic Cloud Compute, or basically the virtual server part of the world for Amazon. This is where the virtual servers are spun up and spun down and they're run. Also notice at this point that we have this reference to running instances. Most likely you have zero running instances. An instance is a specific virtual server. So if you have a server that is in your office, that is a physical real server. If we have the equivalent running up in the cloud, it would be called a virtual server. The overarching technology is called EC2, but the individual servers that go under EC2 are called instances. So you'll see the reference to instances here. That just means servers. And the next thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and go down on the left side, and we're going to select key pairs. And so the idea is that we need to set up a key pair. This is a security apparatus for us. If you already have key pairs that have been set up, you'll see them here. Most likely your screen will be blank. In my case, I'm going to set up a new key pair. I'm going to press create key pair. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it RCC key four, which would be the next one. And it creates it. And then it also downloads this uh, little PIM file which has got a text extension on it. And so what I want to do is I need this file on my computer. I'm going to go and close this window right here. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to find my file here. Uh, here it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it just .pem. I'm going to delete the text here. And I'll get a warning notice on my Mac. And I'll say use PIM. And now it sees it as being a digital certificate that helps authorize us, that tells Amazon we are a legitimate person to be interacting with them. So we're just going to leave it here on our system. And now that I got it set up, we're set to take the next step in our setup process. So we're next going to do is we're going to visit AmazonMarketplace.com and uh, we're going to get to the marketplace here and we're going to do a search for FileMaker. And just like we had in the previous video, we're going to see the options for 5, 10, 25, 100, but I'm going to select the BYOL option. So we're going to do that. The next thing you're going to do is select the continue button. And the next thing you're going to want to do is press the accept software terms. And of course down here you can see information on pricing and things like that. We have other videos that talk about pricing. Uh, feel free to check it out. But the next step here is to accept the software terms. And now you're going to see this screen right here. You're going to be sent an email. But that email, while useful, is not critical. The next thing you need to do is select usage instructions right here. Now understand that the usage instructions really should say choose a region to activate our virtual server. And so and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make this uh, window a little bigger here. And we're going to see this uh, dialog here. And you're going to see the available regions here for you to spin up your virtual server. Initially, we have North America support. As the months go along, you'll start to see support for Europe or Asia Pac, places like that. So those additional regions, as they become available, will be displayed down the page here and you can pick the region that you want to activate. To activate the region, you press the link and then you go through the stack creation process. Now a stack is a set of resources or a set of items that are used to build our virtual server. So this stack is pre-built, pre-configured by FileMaker. All we have to do is basically agree to it. So I say use this uh, custom template down here to build the server. We need a server name. Stack name is a server name. It's kind of uh, misleading. I'm going to say it's RCC test 10. Their email address that we will be used to access our server. I'm going to say cloud account at rcconsulting.com. We can also pick the instance type. This is the size of the server. We have other videos that talk about this. I'm going to start off with a T2 medium in this case right here. And I'm going to select a key name here. This is the key that we set up earlier. I'm just going to use key four. That's the one I just created. And I'm going to hit next. This is an option screen. We don't have to do anything here. We just say next again. And then you can review what we've set up. 
I had a little bit of a space in my email address. I fixed that just a second ago. And then we get down here, we've got our server instance size. We've got uh, all the information we need, including our key. Down here, we're going to check this checkbox that says AWS will use CloudFormation software to create our server. That's in plain English what this means. CloudFormation, a very cool term for building a server up in the cloud. Very neat stuff. So I'm going to hit Create. And so what you see right here is it's spinning up our new RCC Test 10 server. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my email here. And I can see that we received our initial email from Amazon. And it simply says that we are in the process of subscribing. And if you'd like some additional billing information, etc., you can click these links here. None of these links right here immediately help us do anything. So this is a good email to save and be aware of, but nothing here really helps us. What we're doing at this point is waiting for another email to arrive, and this one will tell us to go into FileMaker system and to select the FileMaker software subscription that we need to use. So the next email we're going to get is the one that looks a lot like this. It says, Dear customer, you have chosen to bring your own FileMaker license to the AWS. So what we need to do is we need to click here on the link and go to the FileMaker store. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the new license option right here. The next thing we can do is select the number of users for the new license that we want to purchase. Notice that we have many more options before, and if we only bought directly from AWS, we had once again 5, 10, 25, and then the 100 slot here. So this gives us many more options to leverage, including whether we want to select the education or nonprofit pricing up there at the top. The next thing we're doing is we're going to go ahead and go through the purchase process right here and check out and pay with our credit card. So then we get through our purchase process and that gets completed. In this case, once again, we bought five user licenses. Now, if you watch the previous videos where we did the purchase purely on Amazon, you'll notice that right here we kind of did our departure and now we're coming back effectively. We're going to wait to receive an email from FileMaker saying that we're ready to complete the setup process. This is more or less effectively the same email that we saw before. So here we see an email once again that says, thank you for purchasing the FileMaker software. Welcome to AWS. Let's complete the final setup right here. Enter the information here. So we click the link. We need to get our Amazon account number. To get my Amazon account number, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my AWS console. I'm going to click Cloud Account. I'm going to say My Account. I'm going to find my number here at the top. A lot of this is fuzzed out. Oops copy that. I'm going to close that window. I'm going to also close that window. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to say RCC test 10 password that we want to use. Once again, this is, has to be a fairly comprehensive password. Uh, one, two, three, four won't work. In fact, if I do one, two, three, four, you'll see that give us a, a message here that we have to have between eight and 128 characters and they have to be different kinds of characters, etc. So I'm going to type a word with a number and a symbol, and that'll get me through there. Once again, the time zone is important because FileMaker does some automatic maintenance for us, and we want the automatic maintenance to happen at the middle of the night, and the only way it knows the middle of the night is is to actually check the time zone. So we're going to be Pacific time zone, but it's all based on city. So I'm going to do America, Los Angeles. I'm not in Los Angeles or anywhere close, but that is my time zone. I'm going to hit setup. And we're going to get a counter here. If this works correctly, you'll see a little progress bar fly across. So after about a two or three or four minute delay, we're going to get our FileMaker Cloud Admin Console log on. So I'm going to put uh, my username password that I've been using for a while now, cloud account, and then my super amazingly secret password, which has to have all the characters and stuff in it. I'm going to hit sign in, and I'm going to say not now. And I'm going to notice that we do have our new server right here. So we have our new RCC Test 10 server with our medium instance. And once again, our purchase process was a little different but it gave us additional options.
So now at this point, this video is basically done, but I want to warp backwards to a spot we saw just a moment ago on FileMaker's website where we had kind of a choice in the matter. So let me go ahead and warp backwards now. So before we hit new license and we were on the FileMaker website, but what if we press existing license right here instead? Well, what we're going to get is a screen like this that will allow us to put in our previous license key for our previous FileMaker server software or our FLT license. So whatever license we had previously, and we're going to hit submit. And then what's going to happen is that we're going to get a confirmation message that we will be receiving an email in a short period of time. So this is the, exactly the same thing that we had before, except that before we bought a new license, this time we cashed in an existing license for an on-premise server, and it's going to take that license, make a note in the system that we're making this transition, and then it's going to activate our instance for us and email us, right? Now it's important to understand a couple things here. If we go back again to our license key right here that we're going to cash in, if we go back to this screen right here, the license key here has to be an annual FLT license, okay, or it has to be an annual VLA license or AVLA license, and it has to have at least five concurrencies with it. Okay, so you understand what I said by that. If you bought 10 copies of FileMaker Pro and a copy of server and no concurrency licenses back in the day, that license key will not work here because you have to have at least five concurrencies, and those are connections for FileMaker Go and WebDirect users. You have to have five of those connections available. If not, you're going to get into a spot where your license key is not accepted. So if you have a perpetual license or you have an AVLA license that didn't have any concurrencies, you're going to need to contact FileMaker Sales and talk to them about getting your license upgraded so it can be accepted with your new FileMaker Cloud instance.